A note to listeners, Straight Up Care and Reduce the Stigma intentionally avoids stigmatizing language. However, we do not censor the language of individuals with lived and living experience. We respect their right to use the words they prefer. Welcome to Reduce the Stigma, brought to you by Straight Up Care. Today we have an episode of Meet the Peer, a special series where we shine the spotlight on peer specialists. Okay. Hello, and welcome to Meet the Peer, a special series where we shine the spotlight on peer specialists. I'm your host, Whitney Minarchuk, and on this episode of Meet the Peer, we have Michaela Hansick, a certified peer specialist in South Dakota. Welcome, Michaela. Thank you for having me. Good to be here. It's great to have you here, and I'm excited to learn more about you. Can we start off with just hearing about your lived experience and, and your journey to what brought you here today? Um, my journey started about five years ago. I was at my low, so my low, and I took a plea into drug court, and little did I know that it would change my life forever. It would lead me to the position I'm in, to wanting to help people that were like me that nobody else understood. And drug court is not something everyone's familiar with. Can you pr- describe a little bit what drug court is and, and what that was like for you? Um, I could describe drug court as it's very, very intense probation. It's the step they give to minimum people before they send you off to prison. And for me, I had just gotten my first drug charge, you know, lost, confused, and here they come, just swooping me off my feet, and they teach you routine stability. It's all about people, places, and things. And of course, at first, you know, nobody believes it. But if it wasn't for drug court, I wouldn't be where I'm at. Wow. So it sounds like a, a good resource uh, that can really kind of help people to avoid that oh, yeah. more serious, you know, charges. Uh, incarceration, etc. Yep. That's basically what it does. Pause. <laughs> and so you have an exciting day coming up on November 1st. Can you share with us what that is? November 1st is when we're graduating from our peer support specialist training. And it's going to be a big day. They're doing, you know, a whole graduation ceremony. We're able to invite people and people can come in and see and talk to us and learn more about us. Very exciting, and congratulations in advance. Thank you. So what led you to become a peer specialist? Um, I, I just want to help people. I want to help people that are like me. I want, you know, the misunderstood, the stigmatized people, the people that have been told there's no hope for you. I just want to be that person to them. The person I wish I had when I had began my journey into like sobriety and recovery, even with my mental health or physical health, even I didn't have anybody there to push me. And so that's a big thing for me. That's what I want to do for somebody. And you mentioned like having, being the person that you wish you had had, What do you think it would have been like for you if you had a peer specialist involved in your recovery journey early on? Um, I don't think I would have felt so lost or hopeless. Um, I really felt like I was, it was me against the world, basically. And there was so many times I wanted to give up because I didn't have anybody that knew what I was going through that I could talk to about it. I had my other peers that were in drug court, but they were just as lost as I was. And no matter how many times your probation officer or your treatment counselor tells you, oh, we understand, we understand. Nobody truly understands unless they've been there. 
Right. So I feel like it would have helped a lot. So some, you know, feeling alone, like you said, and yes, you had those peers, but they were, you know, going through, they were figuring things out as well. And so someone who can say, hey, I've literally been in your shoes. I know exactly what you're going through. Yeah. Somebody that can say, okay, so we need this step in order to get the rest of our steps. And that would have been so helpful to know on day one, instead of just being thrown back out into the world sober and okay now I gotta find a place to live a job you know I have to get my ID I have to get my social security card those are really tough things to figure out when you've never had to adult or figure those things out before and so absolutely that's yeah I'm sorry go ahead no you're fine (laughs) it's very overwhelming too like almost where do I even start oh yeah it's it's a mind game at first, I think. I, when you're first trying to navigate where you turn next, it's the hardest decision. Like, okay, so if I do this, then I could get in trouble for, you know, not having a job right now, but I i don't know how to get a job if I don't have my ID, but I can't get my ID because I don't know where to start. So just a lot of it, I think people give up pretty easy because they don't have that person to be like, no, this is, you know, not babying them but like hey I've been there and this is the step I took first and if you take this step it can make this step easier yeah and I think you know we hear the term journey I I I just used it you know in introducing you that it is a journey there is a recovery path but if you don't have someone to guide you or and to be who's already kind of traversed it overcome the obstacles how are you supposed to know otherwise? I don't think you do. I think you just wing it and you hope for the best. And a lot of people don't make it past that first step. You know what I mean? A lot of people just are like, this is way too hard. I can't do this. But they yeah. don't have that support system. They don't have the resources and they don't know all of the resources available. And that's a big thing as well. Absolutely. Uh, It's very complicated to figure out who can support you with what, what you're eligible for. Um, Mm -hmm. And when you're coming out from, you know, whether it be substance use or a mental health crisis, you aren't in a place to try to tackle all of that at one time on your own. Um, Oh, no. Oh, no. (laughs) It it gets to be a lot. It really does. Because there's you look at what's piled in front of you and you think oh well this is the most important thing you know whether it be like going back to school getting your children back if they've been taken away or if they're placed somewhere else or anything like that but like what you don't realize is those baby steps that are there that you have to hit first like passing those UAs or even going and filling your medications but you don't have money to fill your medication so now what do you do So it's like those steps that you need to take to get there. And I think that's where people need help the most. Absolutely. Uh, And what insight you have right there about that early recovery experience. And I'm sure you're going to be able to really help people navigate the difficult systems. Uh, So I'm excited to to see you grow as a peer specialist. Um, And you've touched on a lot of ways that a peer uh, specialist can support someone. But how would you describe it? If someone didn't know what peer support was, what would you say? Um, I would tell them I'm no different than you. I've been there. I have taken the steps that you're about to take. And I'm just here to help hold, hold your hand to get to the next step. And then after that, we can talk about the next step and the next step. And then one day, I hope that they're in my position where they can help people as well and be that person in recovery that they needed in the beginning. Just like you're being. Yeah. Great. And, um, you know, you're, you're embarking on this new journey as a peer specialist. What excites you most? You've mentioned being there for people the way that you wish you would have had. Is, is there anything else that gets you really excited? Um, my kids get to watch me become the version of me that I wanted to be for so many years. 
and I get to meet new people. I get to speak to people. I get to push how just because we've all had substance abuse or we all suffer from mental health issues, we're not the label that they've put on us. We're, you know, we're doing this. We're taking a stand. We're helping people. We're breaking down the walls of what people really think we're at we're addicts and what we're like because we're not like that we're not some stereotype you can label us as yeah and uh you mentioned having been part of the drug court uh program and having you know substance use in your background what other lived experiences would you like to offer peer support for um, I mean, I have the substance abuse disorder. I have mental health issues, anxiety, depression. Um, I have emotional support is a thing. I have lost both of my birth parents. I have lost multiple friends to overdoses or just health issues in general. In my eyes, I want to help everybody no matter what position you're in in life, whether you're still trying to get sober, whether you're sober, whether your mental health isn't where you'd like it to be. I just, that whole spectrum, that's where I'm at and that's where I've been. I've taken the steps to get my medication, the steps to, you know, go through treatments, all of it. And that's just very versatile, I guess you would say. Yeah. And of course, I- my heart goes to you for your losses. Uh, grief is, is very uh, impactful and, and can really throw you off course. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Grief is a big one because we're so used to, to masking emotions. And so I lost my mom and I went off the deep end. But then when I lost my dad, uh, December will be two years ago, I was able to get through that sober. And I remember, like, I felt so accomplished. And if I can just help someone get through the next day, if they're going through something like that, that's a huge, huge milestone for anybody. Absolutely. And I'm going to go back a little bit. You talked about labels, stigma, because this is a world of labels. Um, and we know the importance of things like person first language, uh, Mm -hmm. and other ways to really focus on the human. Um, but there is still a constant battle against stigma going on that we, we all in this field, in this world need to, to take on. And what would you like to say to challenge stigma? Never judge a judge a person just because I was that addict who was homeless helpless I couldn't go five minutes without being high doesn't mean that five years down the road I didn't pull myself out of that and I I now have a home I have a car I have kids I have a very nice job and now look where I'm at you just because someone was something doesn't mean that that's what that person was forever And I don't feel like anyone's in any position to look down on anyone else because in reality, no one is better than anyone else. We're all on just different levels. Absolutely. And there will be someone who watches this interview or listens to it who is in a a bad place. You know, they're struggling with something. What would you like them to hear? It doesn't last forever. It might feel like it's going to, but where you're at today doesn't have to be where you're at in a year or even two days from now. You just have to keep pushing. If you tell yourself every morning when you get up, it's going to be a great day, and you do that for, let's say, 30 days, your body is going to start believing that every day is going to be a great day. Yes, the power of, you know, mindset, positive thinking. Uh, I know some people think, oh, that sounds very easy. And it's and it's not, you know, but you, if you try it, you can then. It does change your attitude. It does change your outlook. That, it's kind of like that thing, like saying, fake it till you make it. 
but you're telling yourself something and you're going to do it until you believe in it, until you believe in yourself. Yeah. That believing in yourself, that is not easy. Uh, oh, no. <laughs> it's one of the hardest early. things you'll ever do. Absolutely. And sometimes you need a peer who believes in you until you believe in yourself. Yep. Well, thank you, Michaela. Uh, this was wonderful getting to learn about you. Uh, and I'm excited for you to be that support for people early in recovery and wherever they are in their lived or living experience. And if you are interested in receiving peer support services from Michaela, you can visit the link to her website in the show notes. And if you enjoyed this interview, please share it with friends and family to help more individuals hear the remarkable stories of peer specialists. And on behalf of Straight Up Care, thank you all for joining us. Thank you for listening. If you enjoyed this episode, please join us on our mission to reduce the stigma by liking, sharing, and leaving us a review. You can watch our full episodes on our Amazon Fire and Roku TV channels, as well as at ReduceTheStigma.com. Reduce the Stigma is hosted by me, Whitney Minarchek edited by Sarah Elash and music by Audiosphere. This has been a Straight Up Care production.